expectations are formed based on the past. So they want us to be in a space where we're able to see things that we've never experienced before to see what's coming because what's coming is way outside of our experience. So the more that we can let go of our expectations and say, I'm just open to feeling great. I'm open to feeling love. You know, I'm open and receptive to what good things are coming my way and to be in that space of allowing. And I think part of the reason why they're sharing some of the calamitous stuff, the difficult stuff is because when things happen, we'll be like, okay, I got it. I know this is, this is, you know, I just got to make it through this and everything's going to be fine. And then they want us to try to just be as open and allowing as possible and to limit our expectations, to not have expectations that are too specific to just say, okay, I want to feel loving thoughts. I want to feel harmony between people. So that feeling, if they are very much stuck in the pattern of wanting things to go back to the way they were, they will be very much in resistance to this energy. And so that's what they said is the role of a light worker. They said those people need to see us because they can't see the angels. And that's one of the big reasons why we're here. You got to accentuate the positive. Wow! I feel good. You're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just bad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? Welcome to another show, Accentuating Positive with Karen Swain. Always a blessing to present these shows for you today. We are going to fly with the angels today. I just looked at the clock and it's 10.10 here. Executive numbers. <laughs> so, many, so many synchronicities pinging off today. It's bizarre. With a beautiful Anne Tucker. Welcome to the show, Anne. Thank you. So happy to be here with you, Karen. Oh, me too. We've already been yakking for oh, ten, at least 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 so flying with the angels today we were just Anna and I were just talking about I a few years ago quite a few years ago probably about 10 years ago the angels had said to me put more people that are talking about the angels on your show and I said yeah I can do that and they said you know we want to spread our message more and I said yeah I can do that and I thought that there were like heaps of people talking about angels and when I deliberately looked I didn't actually find that many. So when I do find an, someone that says I'm channeling the angels, it's like, yeah, let me talk to them. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about Anne. I'm looking forward to hearing Anne's story. Anne didn't always channel angels. In fact, she was more comfortable in the corporate American space working as an executive coach for some of the biggest companies in the world. But a series of increasingly otherworldly psychic experiences made her realize that her place was in the woo-woo world. Let's talk about the ascension world, <laughs> but we do have to reclaim that word woo-woo. As Jamie Butler says, it's not woo-woo, it's true-true. So she gave up her career, burned her bridges and came out as a healer and a channel. Now she couldn't imagine being anything else and loves sharing her beautiful weekly messages from the angels with her online audience. And I was just telling Anne that I usually sort of look up people before I chat to them in the mornings here in Sydney and my guide said, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> and then I couldn't help myself. So I listened to your latest message on YouTube and it was yeah. so synchronistic with a conversation I had with a beautiful spiritual healer last night. It was so synchronistic and beautiful. So, yeah. Anyway, today, Anne is a channel for information and healing from the angel realms, the angelic realms, helping awaken souls to take advantage of this time of rapid growth and ascension, which is what you were talking about in your last message. As a trance channel, Anne enters a meditative state where she allows angels to speak directly through her. The practical, poetic, inspiring messages she brings through offer angelic guidance and healing frequencies that will help to prepare us and usher us through this planetary shift in consciousness. And your website is your name, antucker.com, and with an E, because I've got an yes. Anne in my name. My second name's Anne, and uh, without the E. And okay. I remember I was speaking to 
Laurie-Anne Spagna on the show this year, at the beginning of this year, and I was talking about the name Anne, and she said something quite profound about the name Anne. It was something to do with leadership, leading people. I can't remember. I can't remember what she said. Oh, no. <laughs> oh I didn't realise. Yeah, the name Anne is quite a profound name, and I'm like, there you go. Yeah. But <laughs> I'd love to hear about what happened when you were in corporate medicine, because it sounds like, unlike many people I speak to, you were loving the corporate thing. So what, yeah. what happened to change your mind? I mean, I, it's funny. Like I would say yes and no about loving it. Like there's things I really love about work. I loved about doing that work. Like the, the people I worked with some really amazing, like really, really, really competent people, people who took a lot of ownership of their life and, you know, they would people who would say something and then go do it. You know what I mean? And you can't help but admire that. And so there was a lot of things that were very cool about it, but there, it was a very male dominated world. Very, I was working mostly in tech and med tech companies and it was hilarious because I would be, you know, at these offices where I'd walk into the women's restroom, there would be 25 stalls and I would be the only one, you know, I'd be like, this whole bathroom is all for me. <laughs> like there's, there was just no other women. There was literally no other women. So it was very, very masculine. And there was absolutely no space for me to bring my spiritual side. And, and I actually did start introducing some work around what I know are soul types, but you can just, 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 I called it decision types. You know what I mean? I had to kind of hide everything and kind of, you know, you're still talking about everybody's soft, squishy side, but, but it, it was not where I was meant to be. I started having this just overwhelming need to start figuring out what was going on with me because it was, I was having um, crazy experiences that I couldn't explain. I started having things happen where I was like, for example, I would co-locate, like I would be, I remember one time I went, I was, you know, I, I had been interested in this. I had a friend who was going to be at a meditation at the local bookstore. And I wasn't interested in the, the meditation. I was going to see my friend, but we're there and there. She's beating a drum and I'm doing the meditation. And I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll do it. So I'm laying on the floor. Every time she hits the drum, it's like, a, like I drop down like a drop of water from the center of my back. And I dropped into a pool and slowly I, I dropped, dripped out of my body into this pool of water. I became the pool of water as she's doing this drum beating. And it's just, you know, I think it's like I'm daydreaming, but I'm, I become this pool of water and I'm looking up and I see all these different creatures come in and look in at me as I'm the pool of water. And I see one is this rabbit that comes in and looks at me and then comes out. And then another thing comes in and looks at me. And that's the whole meditation. And I come out and I think, well, that was weird. She has us write down our notes and then she makes us share it. I'm like, mine was a total brain fart. And then I get home and there on the dining room table is a brand new copy of Watership Down with the exact rabbit on the cover that had looked in at me when I was the, and then the, the book behind it, everything I had seen wow. was something that my then partner had been looking at in the bookstore at the same time that I was meditating. So I was, I was in both places. And then it, it kind of grew from there. It's, it, it started to be a thing where I would, I would pop into another person's body and start looking through their eyes and start experiencing what the, what their feelings were and what their, you know, I could tell what they were wearing. I could feel the strappy sandals on their feet. It was crazy. The real turning point was I was exploring all of this was I, I kind of was, you know, I was an executive coach. I was trying to help other people to, you know, to be their best selves and whatever they were doing. So I kind of had to eat my own dog food. I said, okay, what would I, what would I tell someone else? If it was someone else who was this curious, who was having these kind of experiences, who was this motivated to figure it out, I would say, take a year, like take a year and just double down and do it all. Like, you know, travel, go to the retreats, go to the workshops, do it all. So that's what I did. So I, I literally, I quit and I just, I, you know, I went to Peru and to Costa Rica. I went to Canada. I went to, you know, all these different things that I did. And it was just, it was no going back at that point. And I was within a year, I was working as a professional healer. Amazing, amazing. That's so quick. How long ago was that? That was a while ago. <laughs> I want to say like a decade, more than a decade ago. About a, yeah, about that, about a decade ago. 
And at the first, in the beginning, you know, I was doing, I was a clairvoyant healer. I started recognizing that the, like when I mentioned that I would pop into somebody's body, I learned to control that right away. Right. But, uh, and I'm very careful <laughs> with that, about not doing that without permission. But, but I learned that was the healing modalities that I, I used to step into someone's body. And then they, and then what I now know are angels at the time. I just thought it was my, I thought it was my healing guides would step into me and that's how they would heal. It would work from it within the body. Um, and I would see clairvoyantly, I would be able to describe and say what was seeing and stuff like that. And that I did that for, for quite some time, for a couple of years. And that was how I did all my sessions. And then, and I would feel it, I would say it, I would, you know, I would know it. But then I, 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 the trans channeling didn't start till later. And that started because I was out, uh, I went to go meditate my usual spot. I sit down one day, just like normal. And then, and then I was used to my guides coming in from the back to do the healing. That's how they would do it. All of a sudden, I think they're trying to come in from the front. I feel this incredible pressure come down. And it's like, it's like the biggest guide you could imagine sitting right on my forehead and on my chest. And it was so heavy. I couldn't breathe. It was literally like, it was just, it was like a, a physical sensation of pressure. And I thought, this is weird. And first of all, why are they not coming in? Like what's going on? And, uh, but I thought, okay, let's just roll with it. We'll see something's going to happen here. This is, you know, it's something, it's exciting. We'll see what changes. And then nothing, they just sat there squishing me the entire time. And this went on for literally six months where for six months, the minute I would close my eyes, it was pushing, like pushing on me and I couldn't figure it out. And then finally, it dawned on me after six months that they weren't trying to come in. They were trying to lift me up. And the sensation was like the G-forces of them trying to raise my frequency very quickly to come up to a space where they could connect with me. And so, so that was a mind bender. So the minute I realized it and I just kind of relaxed and opened up, zip, I was up. Wow. And then I could see, I was in this space and I could see all these, you know, what I would consider like my, the, they dressed appropriately from my perception. They're all wearing white flowing robes. And, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure that was barfed out of my mind, but anyway, <laughs> so we're, we're all hanging out and I'm like so excited. Cause this has been like six months. I'm like, yes, I'm like, here, let's do this. And, and then I'm like waiting for somebody to say something or do something and, and nothing. They literally just stood here like in a semicircle around me, just smiling and looking at me and smiling. And I'm like, somebody say something and crickets, literally nothing for, and this went on for another six months where I would go up immediately, zip, I would get up and then nothing. And they'd all just be there waiting like, oh, great, you're here, but nothing. They wouldn't, they wouldn't. I was like, I kept experimenting, trying different things. I'd be like, can you, can you write? Can you write on it? Can I read writing? Can you try that? Can, I mean, I'm, I, and nothing worked like literally. And then, uh, so then one day I finally decided, okay, I am just going to try to make that connection. And then I'm going to try to write and see what happens. So I sat down and I made the connection. And at this point I had a year of practice. So I was good at it. <laughs> so I sat down and penned a paper and I said, okay, just one word at a time. And it came through, if you can imagine like a, like a pipe going up and the word would come down the pipe. And if I didn't write the word down, it would just stick in the pipe and nothing else would happen. So I would just, and I wanted one word at a time because I wanted to make sure that I couldn't really follow what was being said so that I would not be confused. I wouldn't think it was, so I would know for sure it wasn't me. And I just took one word at a time and I thought, this is nothing. This makes no sense at all. This is just gobbledygook. And I get to the end, I stop, I read it. And it was absolutely profound. And it blew my mind. And that was when I realized, okay, I am supposed to stay here. <laughs> I'm supposed to stay down here but connect up there. And that's how this whole process worked. But it took me, it was just hunt and peck trying to figure it out for the longest time. So yeah, so that's kind of how it happened. And then it's, and then it, they got to a place where after, so that was how I started was writing messages. And then they worked on my vocal cords for about four months. They told me they were going to do it. And then I had, uh, I literally had no voice for like four months wow. and it would be, I could talk for about 20 minutes and then it would, it would be gone. And uh, about four, and they were changing my vocal cords so that I could project, so that they could speak through me and that I could project frequencies, angelic frequencies through my vocal cords. Yeah. I've been talking about that with one of my clients who knows that he has the most incredible codes and frequencies in his voice. And I'm like, you got to get out there and get people. And so people can hear you. 
yeah. there's a few things I want to address before we go go on. Okay, so so you said you took a year off and just yeah. explored a whole lot of things. Obviously, you were supported financially because I know a lot of people are going through this. Like yeah. you, so that was cool. So that yeah, yeah. And you said that you were sort of feeling people jumping into their bodies. It felt like you were jumping in, and then you learned to control that. Yeah. How did you learn to control that? Because I think that there's a lot of um, empaths out there that do that and yeah. they feel that other person, like they feel it like they're wearing their body. I've been mm-hmm. doing it for years. I was doing it all my life and didn't know what, what was going on. But yeah. ha- ha- so you've learned to, you said you learned to control that quite quickly. How did you control that? What did you do? Uh, well, so with the first time it happened, I was thinking about a friend and then all of a sudden I was looking out of her eyes and I could see the TV she was watching. I could see she was on an airplane. I could see the show she watched. I could see her looking at this other woman's shoes. So it freaked me out. And then I I texted her afterwards and she, and she confirmed. She's like, yeah, do you know, I was watching this show and how did you, you know, so that it was all accurate. So it was really through intention. It was after that I made an appointment with a friend. So I gave it an outlet, but I scheduled it. So I made, I told a friend the next day, I said, Hey, okay, I'm going to, at 11 o'clock, I'm going to come and see if it works. I'm going to try to look through your eyes. So I made the, I tried to do it and I got, I 11 o'clock came and I tried to look and I couldn't see anything. So I thought, well, it's not working, but I could feel in her body. I could feel layers of fabric on her legs. It felt like there was multiple layers of fabric rubbing against her legs. I could feel other things about her body. So I, I called her afterwards and talked to her and I said, I couldn't, I couldn't see anything. And she says, yeah, at 11 o'clock, we were doing a meditation. I had a blindfold on, but she said she was cold and she had a scarf on her lap. So it was like, okay, this works. But the the fact that I was, the fact that I, number one, I gave it an outlet and number two, that it was the intention. It was the thought, okay, I, I want, I don't want to do this without permission. So, and that seemed to be enough. But it's not enough, I think, to say, I'm just not going to do it. It's like, you got to give it a space to go because it's like an energy. You have to express it. Wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Amazing. Yeah. I think uh, yeah, the key there is to play with it, work with it, have intention and not be, and not suffer from it, not suffer from yeah. your your sensitivity or what's happening and, yeah, not feel like it's weird or woo-woo and, yeah, just own it. Yeah. Own it. Own yeah. It. Yeah. Own it. And rather than resist it, like it's like anything, like if you push against it, say, oh, this is this is exhausting me or whatever. If you if you say no, okay, this is an amazing gift, and then channel it somewhere, then you it's like you're going with the river. You have think about how much more control you have when you're flowing down a river versus when you're going up a river and all that water is going in your face and you have no control, right? Going down, you can really coast with it and you can, yeah, you can control it a lot more. Exactly. Well, you were pretty on the ball to know how to do that sort of before you know because this is at the beginning right this is right yeah this is at the beginning yeah yeah and I'm you know I have to think that I was very like I remember having conversations with my guides when I was a little girl I just didn't know that's what it was but I specifically remember some conversations and I remember that I was not talking it was like I was getting answers and information in that conversation but as a little girl I think oh I'm just I'm you know it's like and I, I had imaginary friends and all that so I I know even in this process that I was very, very guided. I just didn't understand that as I didn't know what it was just yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Exactly. I know exactly what you mean. And you said that you had the pressure on your chest because a lot of people say that they have that pressure on their chest and they're scared. They're like some demonic entity sitting on me (laughs) trying to suffocate me. You know, like there's a whole lot of things that we come up with. But I've never heard anybody say what you said about the pressure on the chest. I've often heard people say that it was spirit trying to get their attention. A friend of mine killed herself years ago. And um, and she did that. She went and sat on people's chests like they'd wake up and they had felt like they had this pressure on their chest and she was just messing with them from the other <laughs> Getting people's attention who didn't actually believe in spirit or life after death or all that sort of stuff. She was just, yeah, she was haunting people. It was hilarious. Anyway. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, so the pressure yeah. on your chest can be angelic. Well, and so like- for me, just to confirm that, is that once I made the connection, once I went up, it literally felt like I was putting a helmet over my head that came down to about here. 
and like, a, and it was, it was like having my head at the bottom of a very deep swimming pool. It was so much pressure. It was physically painful in oh. the beginning, channeling the angels in the beginning was physically quite painful and uncomfortable. And it took me a long time. Like now I can channel them. No problem. And I feel them in my crown and I'm aware when they're connected, but it's, it's not, I, it took me it's like, it's almost like it just gradually lessened and lessened until I, now I can be at that frequency and it doesn't hurt anymore. But in the beginning you bet. And there'll be people like, for example, I have a program, a healing program I call peace bathing. And in the last session, they brought people very high and they frequently will bring people up based on what they're doing. You know, what is needed for that particular type of healing, but they brought people extremely high and many people in the group they briefly felt nauseous. They felt the pressure. It was like, everybody talked about it afterwards. And yeah, it's, it is, it's just like anything. It's like, if you're raising your frequency, it is, it's, it's, we think of it because they're at a higher frequency. We think it's going to be light and, but it's not it to us. It feels like heavy. That's what it's crazy, but it's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. When I was young, masseuse, I was massaging a Hollywood movie star who was out here making a very bad B grade movie even though she was a great actress. But anyway, that's a long story. And <laughs> she had a picture of a guru on her dressing table in the hotel. And I was thinking, what's all this Indian guru thing about? And they started to expand my um, crown chakra. And then I started channeling and tell her why she was born into the family she was born in, what she was doing in Australia, what she was here to do with her life. Like, And I didn't know I could do any of that. But uh, at the time I was doing it, it was like my mouth wouldn't shut up and I didn't know I had to shut up my mouth because they sort of almost took over. But I was so ill after that for days. And then when I asked them about it, they said the heightened frequency that you experienced enabling you to do that was not a match to your normal default frequency because you criticize yourself all the time, you know, you're in mm-hmm. judgment. And so I had to clean all that up to meet that frequency. So I think that that's what the pain is. It's it's the incongruent. Exactly right with the two the dominant frequency you carry so if you criticize yourself and beat up on yourself and i'm not good enough and i'm too fat and i'm too ugly and life's a bitch and then you die then you to hit those higher frequencies there's yeah it's just it's painful it can be painful i 100 percent agree it makes me think of like when you hear people talk about people who have had uh uh near-death experiences and many people talk about walking into the light and the way i understand that is that is that you imagine the light is pure love and and how much love can you stand if you are holding a lot of self-hatred or criticism or whatever that love will hurt and so people will walk towards our light that light and they'll go as as close as they can until it just hurts too much and then they have to stop and that's the that's that's where they are right that's the that is what they've how how clear they got in that lifetime but um but yeah i think it's it is how much love can we stand oh you're making me cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you we know we're not really having a conversation until someone cries. So it's good. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's funny this morning, the angels were all over me. They were like, don't watch her. And I'm like, they made me, well, I'm wearing all white. I'm like, I'm wearing all white. Okay. They were dictating to me this morning. <laughs> they were dictating to me this morning what to do. So it's interesting when you said, You went up there and then they stood around you and they're all in white. Yeah. And so so they didn't speak to you for six months and then they started. How did they introduce themselves to you and what did they ask of you? And Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Those first messages. Holy cow. It was almost like I took out the pen and started taking the messages and I just wanted to put it right back. (laughs) I'm like, oh, don't ask me to do that. So they first, the first they first introduced themselves and the one of the first they gave me though they only gave me one name and then after that they told me that they did not want me to use names because one of the lessons for me in terms of this life one of the things that i needed to hold in this life is unity consciousness and names are about identity and they want me to get to oneness to be in oneness so if i'm giving them names I'm giving them identity which is separate separation so they yep. the first name they gave me was uriel Archangel Uriel. And then that was it as the only one, but I know like other than Yeshua, who is clearly Yeshua. Cause he's like, I am he, the son of the blah, blah, blah. Like it's very clear when it's Yeshua. 
Um, and I can feel the different energies that come through, but they describe angels describe themselves as an essence uh, and they describe themselves as being everywhere. Like me, they're literally all around us right now. And even in us, they're everywhere. But imagine that you are calling upon a specific energy. So say you're saying, I'm looking for Archangel Michael. Then if you imagine within that essence, it's just like ourselves, that every one of your cells has the DNA that is like the portrait of your whole entire person. So every cell has all the information of who you are. Well, within that essence, everything that is angelic is in that essence. So they can draw from all that essence and then like imagine like all the out that energy. So it goes zoom, and then here you go, Archangel Michael, right? And then it dissipates again around you. So they can they can assume all these different identities. But so that was kind of how they first introduced themselves to me is and 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 I do feel different energies come in at different times depending on what they're communicating. But the first messages they gave me is they came in and said, you must communicate this message. And then they went on to start talking about all this really scary stuff about the earth rift. And they're like, you have to, and they're like, you need to communicate this information because it will save a lot of lives. And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I literally sat on it for like four months and I talked about everything else. Like I would not talk about that. But, you know, I didn't talk about anything I was getting, but, but it was, yeah, four months. And I just didn't want to be that person that was like gloom and doom and, you know, standing on the street corner and like the end is nigh. Like I, you know what I mean? It was, I was just not comfortable with it. And the thing that finally got me to, to do it was was I remember talking to a friend and her telling me that her I have a friend who's a, a a lot of friends who are energy healers in this particular one was working with a client who told her that and I had confi confided in her the messages I was getting and she told me she had this woman who was having all these strange fears and feelings about this this particular like I her channel about this earth rift and she's worried about her parents and her parents live like right where this earth rift was supposed to be and in other words she knew it already she already knew about it like she was already getting her own guidance and the fact that I wasn't sharing what I got it was it's it's number one I'm not telling people anything they don't already know at some level like we all knew this before we get here got here so that was hugely reassuring to me and then the other piece of it was okay if I make the information available, I'm actually giving her peace of mind because right now she has an awareness. She doesn't know what it is. She doesn't know if it's true or not. She has this vague feeling of uncertainty, which uncertainty, that's what really gives us fear. So that realization is I realized, you know what? Uh, yeah, I need to share it. So I, I came out with the first messages and and then it's just been an open floodgate ever since. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I've been talking to people for, I don't know, 25 odd years about all this stuff. And it's yeah. common that the angels, have you heard of Lorna Byrne? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, she, as a kid, I mean, Lorna's in her seventies now. And as a kid, I think she's in her seventies. Uh, the angels came to her and were showing her these probable realities of earth and, and it wasn't pretty. And, right. um, and she's like, what do you want me to do about it? I'm just a kid. Right. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so what's the earth riff? What did they say about that? We've had a lot of people talk about, you know, the cataclysmic future. Yeah. And I don't know, I can, I, every time I turn on some sort of form of news, there's cataclysm happening everywhere at the oh, moment. Gosh, yeah. And it is, it's like, we are, it's a, it's, I see it like right now, the phase that we are in is like an, a rubber band that's getting more and more and more and more stretched. We're like the frog in the pot of boiling water. So there's a lot of people who are just like, oh, I'm, you know, they're just, they're not aware because it's been so continual. My daughter calls it the poly crisis, you know, that something that would have been on the news for weeks is now a day and then it's replaced by another crisis. Like we're just inundated these days. So we're not, it's like people aren't aware. They're not noticing how crazy it's getting. They, oh yeah, it's getting crazy, but we just say that. And then we go about our business as if it's all the same. And yeah, it's really, it's not, it's not the same. This is like a trail of breadcrumbs and it's like leading us up to the energies are becoming, there's more and more turmoil and it, there will be a turning point. The biggest thing that I'm, I'm most excited about is they talk about, and they said it's coming very soon, which with the angels is like soon. It's like, when is soon? But I believe this is within the next year or two, all of this is going to come about. 
And I believe that because of, they are saying it's very soon now. They've added a very in front of soon. Okay. And and then there's also, it matches with astrology that we're in this, in a bunch of different ways of looking at it. It's like this next two years is a really pivotal time. But uh, but they say there's going to be a, a, a wave of light, which I'm sure is one of the solar waves, something, you know, something like that coming to the planet that, and they said it bathes everyone, it bathes, bathes the entire earth, that nothing can hide and that it won't harm anyone, but that it will be the moment that we look back on and point to it and say, that is the moment that everything changed, that that is the, that's the moment. Yeah. And that's coming. And, but as part of that, we have all these other things happening and some of them are really, really hard. Like the earth rift is, I believe, like if I can put two and two together, I believe it's probably some sort of underwater volcano, but they describe it and, and it's connected to tsunami and it's connected to so it's it's they say it's in the indian ocean or near like somewhere near like in in like near that like india uh indonesia closer to indonesia most likely in that area and i believe that it does something they said it will be an ex, uh like an ex, a sound that's heard around the earth around the whole globe so when tonga happened i thought it might be that but tonga you only heard halfway around the earth this they said you will hear it all the way around the earth. So we have a much larger explosion than Tonga, which is hard to fathom. And they said that, that you know, there'll be certain things affecting, like they said, definitely that they said the shipping industry would be calamitous is the word that they use. And these are all messages that I've gotten in sequence. You know, they've talked about it consistently for the last two years. Wow. Um, but I believe there will be a, a significant shift in our environment and there will be a, a, a lot of rain and I don't know if that's rain because when this thing hits, like it could be that like so much of the ocean is boiled off and goes up to the atmosphere that it just rains like mad. Or it could be that there's a cooling or a warming because of a cloud cover, you know, because if there's a lot of debris that goes up, it could be cloud cover that then creates a different a temperature change. But I know they've talked about massive flooding. And that and yes, tsunami, but tsunami only hits a couple of areas, right? It hits the coast. It's like that. But this is like rain and it's, it is May and we are seeing it already. I was in New York this past weekend for an event and there was right as I was landing on the plane, they were like, you know, massive, massive flooding. So one of the big messages that the angels mention all the time is they're asking people to have a way to purify their water because of the fact that that is when we have flooding, the water, uh, our water systems can be contaminated and you can get waterborne disease. So they're saying have a way, and there's you know it doesn't have to be expensive. There's a product called a Life Straw, and I'm not advocating any one product. I just mentioned this one because it's like you can get a four pack at Costco for ten bucks, you know, ten bucks a piece. And you know if you travel, stick one in your luggage, and you can literally drink out of a stream, a mucky stream, with this thing, and your water is clean. Hmm. So there's lots of things you can do, but but have a solution, have a water, a, something to clean your water. Because what if you can't boil it? What if you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah. Whoa. I know. That was a lot. Sorry. You know, and <laughs> listening to you, I've had these conversations a lot on the show. A lot of people talking about it. But it's funny today. I feel like I just want to cry. I know. I'm getting I'm getting full body sh shivers as you're talking, especially yeah. when you talked about that light. And I've heard so many people talk about it. Like I've heard so many people yeah. talk about it. But for some reason, it feels realer to me today. And as I'm chatting to my mob, the guides, they say, yep, yeah, this is the timeline. This is the trajectory that we're all on at this, at this time. Because we've talked about shifting timelines, you know, yeah. different cal cataclysmic events on different timelines and what timeline are you on and yada, yada, yada. And as you're talking, they say, yeah, this is the trajectory that you're on. It, yeah, as you say, very, it's close. It's very close. Mm -hmm. And uh, But Okay, so, well, when you talk about this massive light hitting the world that will reveal everything, I think that that's been happening over time and ever increasing and increasing and increasing. The guides have said as the light increases, it exposes, oh, yeah. there's disclosure, it exposes all sorts of things. It exposes the corruption, the lies, but it also exposes the psychic ability and the different realms yes. and your multidimensionality. And you know, so it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a good and bad thing as, as it uncovers and reveals and expose. But what you're talking about sounds a little different in that 
do you want to just get into it? Because you talked about it on that last message that you just did on YouTube on your channel yeah. too, the light that's very close. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, so you're right that overall we are, it's like we are getting closer and closer to more light. So it's like the overall, the frequency on the planet, like there's, there is agitation and things are coming to the surface and we are clearing. So think about all of the social issues that it's like, and the way I think about it, it's like, we are the neurons of the earth. And so all of our negative thoughts, if the earth is going to shift, we have to purge our negative thoughts, our negative behaviors are, you know, the ways in which we hold each other down, all this stuff has to come to the surface and our anger and our resentment and all this has to come up. So we have all this craziness going on and violence and nuts going on in the world. And this is humanity purging, right? Purging so that the earth can purge, but but the, so, so, and I think that is a function of us, this increasing flow of energies that are, yes, you're right. Like where way more energy is hitting the planet, but this is, and I, I believe there is a, is three waves of light and they've only told me about the first one. But the reason I know there's three is because I cannot tell you how many people have shared their dreams with me. And I have had dreams as well, showing three waves. And so, and I used to think that they were three waves of events. Then I thought it maybe was three, like, you know, was it, is it like, is it COVID? And then, you know, are they three like waves of, of different events that happened? Then they told me about the wave of light. And now I understand, no, it's a, an actual energy. It's an actual wave of light that's coming. And, uh, and it's beautiful. They said that it will, you can't miss it, <laughs> that you, uh, that it will, uh, and, and even if you're worried about like, Hey, I'm in a really difficult spot in life right now. I'm not feeling super high vibe. If you are open to it, it will. And they, they address this in last week's message this past Friday specifically said that you will, your, the things that concern you now will no longer feel concerning that even though you, like, say, for example, you are worried about someone, say there's someone in your life, a, a family member who's going down a dark path or whatever. It's not going to change them. It's going to change how you feel about it. So you change anybody who's open to change. They said that it will affect everyone equally. The only thing that someone can do, well, it will not help them. Well, it will actually feel difficult is if they are trying very, very hard to hang on to the way things were, which makes sense because that is resistance and resistance is painful. So the light will hurt no one, but people who are in, so for example, and you can imagine that, say for example, that, and as part of this, they've talked about like in the near future, major political upheaval and economic upheaval. And we are coming right into the season for that, particularly for the US, but the US economy tends to affect the globe. And I'm expecting a pretty massive economic upheaval. And uh, and so imagine if people lose, you know, and they've said it's people who have a lot. <laughs> people who have a lot have a lot to lose. And they will be sad, right? People do not like to lose what they have. And so that feeling, if they are very much stuck in the in the pattern of wanting things to go back to the way they were, they will be very much in resistance to this energy. And so that's what they said is the role of a light worker is to be, they said, those people need to see us because they can't see the angels. And that's one of the big reasons why we're here. Oh, whoa. As I say, the synchronicity of this conversation and the conversation I was having with a beautiful light worker healer that's here in Sydney, that's going to do a Ascension event in a couple of weeks and talking about, the upgrade and you know like we talk about this all the time in the conscious community the upgrade yeah. the upgrade but she's like no this is a, a, this is bigger this is more this is and yeah. I could get skeptical and say oh yeah everybody says that but <laughs> I'm like listening to her going yeah 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 <laughs> so as you're talking I'm thinking about American politics and um you know, you've been through, well, we've all been through, the whole world's been through a tough time. And then somebody like Trump comes on and says, make America great again. And that whole statement says, we're going to go back to the way we were and make America. So that whole statement is about that. Like we're going to go back and be the, you know, the powerful economic force that we've always been. But that's mm -hmm. not on the cards, is it? It's, it's just not. It is absolutely, matter of fact, my understanding is that the U.S. will no longer be a set of united. It won't be united anymore, that we will split and that there, uh, there will be. So it's like, that's what I mean about political upheaval, that the angel said specifically that there would be 
potentially one of the leaders that could have a health crisis and that could lead to an uprising and there's our economic upheaval in the middle of it and then the US and they say it's not there's no they say there's no fighting like in the sense of like a war there's no civil war but there is it's like people are moving to the states that agree with them and there's sort of this this and there would be some skirmishes in the beginning but that it would be that the United States would no longer be united and it would split and they said this then opens the door for war uh, because of the fact that the U.S. is no longer the great protector. China would feel that it's safe to go after Taiwan. And then they said Japan would rally the rest of the world against China and it would become crazy time. And then they said in the middle of all that is when the earth rift happens and it settles everything down and it gives us the opportunity to come away from this war learning that borders are meaningless and the borders between people, the borders between us and our friends, that people need each other and we come together. And that is our pathway to, to move forward, to get to a place where we can have peace on earth. And then we have, and I don't know when all of that, where in all of that is the big wave of light. I don't know. They haven't given me an indication, but they just say very soon. So maybe the wave of light is part of that, part of helping us to to um yeah to come back from that experience it does sound so scary doesn't it so what they're saying is there needs to be another war before peace before yeah and I, and the I, big thing i would say because it is it does sound very scary but the thing i would say is to remember that not every and the angels have said this many times not everything happens everywhere these are many think about how many different types of things i just described right. and and uh, that it, where you live, maybe only one of those things you witness. And even then where you witness it, maybe it's out there and it's not in your house, right? Like you could be wherever, there could be crazy going on. Like when you listen to the news right now, it sounds so real and so visceral. And then you turn it off and you go make dinner. You know what I mean? Like your life is still here. You And so they say, when you feel scared, bring your mind, your awareness back to your four walls and recognize where are you right now? Like right now you are safe, you are fine. And if any one of these things happen, like one of those things that happens in some area near you, then then you go help those people. You know, then you, and, and they say, there are things we can do. They ask us to make sure we have a way to clear our water, clean our water. They ask us to prepare. If there's things that you need, find out ways that you can get them locally, develop a local network, find things that you need locally. And they said that, that that's going to be an issue because they said shipping, shipping is calamitous. So you need to find ways of getting your needs met locally. Um, and so those are things like do it now. Like if you, you know, if you can find out what are the local farms in your area, what are the, what gets made in your area? You know, who, who are your neighbors? What skills do they have? Like get to know the people around you because they may become more important to you, which is a beautiful thing. So, so the, the big thing, I, and, and then the other thing that they say, which I think is really, really inspiring is they say, everything is energy that people may fear that say, for example, there's a big economic crisis and maybe someone loses their children's college fund. Like that sounds horrible. Like that's terrible. But the fact that someone has been putting money towards their children's college fund means they've been investing in their children's future. And it is the energy of of investing in your children's future that will carry forward and create and manifest magically in this new reality. That creation in this new reality is very different and it's not nearly as hard. <laughs> we are not meant to suffer, right? And so the only reason we're fearful is because we think we need all this stuff in order to be safe. And we have to let all this stuff go because this stuff is holding us in place. And we need to be willing to throw ourselves really out into the unknown and to say, okay, I trust I'm going to be just fine. And it's scary, but it is that, that, that desire to turn around and say, wait, no, but I need to hold and gather and keep. And like, we have to let that go and just say, no, all I need is me. All I need is the love that's inside of me and I'm going to be fine. Powerful message. I'm a bit speechless, which is unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot i mean i know I'm, no, I'm you're knocking my socks off <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely but it is it is one of those things and like i said i i 
I naturally gravitate to the messages that are incredibly hopeful and inspiring. And they give us, you know, it's 80% of the messages they share are that they're, you know, they're telling us incredible things about where we're headed and, and it's going to be amazing, you know, absolutely amazing. They talk about, they talk about uh, that this wave of light. One of the things that happens is we develop an emotional telepathy so that imagine a world where you have people like, you know, world leaders negotiating, but they can feel each other's feelings. So how can you have war if you can feel the other person's feelings? You know, you like talk about being able to see it from the other person's perspective. It completely changes things. So, so, and that's coming, that's coming for everyone. The angel said that we will get to a place where we can see them, actually see them, that our frequency will get high enough that we will be able to see them. And so imagine how many people are going to have questions about that one. When, when light workers wonder like, what, what's my role going to be? How about helping all those people who think they're psychotic because they're seeing angels? <laughs> <laughs> I had someone on the show, oh, one an angel person. I think it was a guy. Was it a guy or a girl? I can't remember. It was years ago. Who talked about this? Who talked about as we shift in vibration, we'll be able to see different realms and the angels will become more manifest in our yeah. physical lives. And to the point where he, she said, was it a guy or a girl? Anyway, it's my memory that if you have a little kid, a baby, a toddler, and you need to go to the shop for a minute, you can say to the angel, can you just watch her for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like you can have the angels babysitting. And I just thought that was so cute. I was so cute. Oh, yeah. I love that. My daughter love said to that. me, she was, as a kid, she was very adamant that she didn't want me to talk about any of this stuff to her. She just wanted to be a kid. And so I, I honored that. I really honored that, but I don't know. It seemed to permeate her reality. She couldn't get away from it, even though I was not directly talking to her about it. And she would say things like, Oh, I got up on the roof today. And I'm like, what? You got up on the roof? And she said, but you believe in the angels, don't you, mom? And I go, well, you know, I do. She said, don't you believe that they're looking after me? And I'm like, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. using I know. it against you oh, oh, no. oh that's so funny i love it i absolutely love it oh god oh, smart so ass. <laughs> but that world that you talk about where imagine a politicians are empathic and they can feel each other i have seen that world i have visualized it i've seen it i've asked for it it's yeah. so comforting to hear you talk about that because to me it's almost like fantasy because look at the way politicians i don't know australian politics is just so bad they film what they call question time and they are just two groups of people on the other side of the room just throwing insults at each other and it's so hard to watch. And then you think these people are governing our country. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It right? is just crazy. Yeah. I mean, no, these right. People are going, but I want to get back to global events, China. Yeah. So mm -hmm. China seems to be in flux. I mean, who knows? There's a lot of people in China, but there's a lot of documentaries out there about the crisis in China financial, the housing crisis. I've watched some great documentaries about it. Um, that, you know, in China to own real estate is is really wanted and all these people buy these apartments they'll never live in. And then yeah. this building has been amazing. Like they build these big high rises and then they can't sustain it and then they're like exploding them. They're, anyway, there's just chaos going on in China. Did they give yeah. you any insight into that? Um, they said that they they didn't talk about the real estate market in China or anything like that. I mean, it's they, but they did say that it was almost like centralization doesn't work anymore. I can't remember the exact words that they used, um, but it was something like that uh, that leadership would be uh, like missing or something like that. That there would be a lack of leadership in Asia. And so, yeah, so that would be so. And and then again, the thing about like trying to get goods from one place to another is an issue. Um, so, and like I said, and as I'm talking about all this stuff, understand that these are, you know, all about timelines, that these are not certitudes, that these are things that are, that are likely to happen, but things could change. Humans have free will. And so it could be a thing that the leaders in China said, we're not going to do that. And then it doesn't happen. So like, this is at the time that they shared it with me, this is what things look like. The way I describe it, the way angels see things, which is so interesting to me, they gave me a visual of how they see. Imagine that you are like a, in a pattern of, uh, you know, of like, uh, like hexagons 
and each one is spinning and they're different sides. And as it spins, you see all the different possible outcomes. And as you look out from you, it's like a puzzle and there's all these other different octagons and they are all spinning as they're moving closer and further from you. So which ones, it's almost like if you're planning a pathway, what are these spinning octagons? What, is, what face is facing you? Is it the face where, where China invades Japan or is it the face where, where China does something different? And so you can look out two or three layers and see what's likely but things are constantly spinning and moving so they can change. And so, so for the angels, they would look and say, okay, of all the hexagons that are coming in to connect with you, here's three of them are showing this outcome and two are showing something else. So this is likely to happen. So, so it's like, how do you juggle and manage the fact that we are all creators and that there's manifestation happening and all this kind of stuff that the collective consciousness is so powerful. So it's all possible, but this is what they have consistently been telling me. And so, and it matches, like I, I, after I hear stuff from them, I, you know, I do, I follow astrology and, uh, and I, I do think astrology supports a lot of this stuff happening. So, so, but we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. No one will be happier than me if everybody comes out you know, smelling like roses and the economy goes up forever. And you know what I mean? Like, great. Except for the fact that if that happens, then none of us will ever be free from the power structures that are holding us at this lower frequency. So I, yeah. I love for everybody to have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> yeah. The way the economy runs just doesn't work. It's yeah. It just doesn't work. It's too, it's too much division It's too much have and have nots. And so that's the piece that needs to shake free. And the power structures are so entrenched. They say that it has to be broken down to a pretty minute level in order for us to have, they say, even technology, they say technology has a negative consciousness. And they said, there'll be three days of darkness and technology will be reset. So, and I think it needs to be rebirthed with a higher frequency consciousness. Is it will be able to keep everything we've learned? It's not like we lose what we've learned, but it needs a reset. I don't know about technology having, okay, having a, a negative. It's the people using it and what they're using it for. And well, that's um, saying the same thing basically, because it is things hold the consciousness of their creator. So right. who created the technology? Who created Facebook? Who created right, all these things? And and how evolved are they? Yeah. Yeah. But like you and I are using technology right now to deliver this message. And you know, and I use technology in the best possible way. So Oh, absolutely. They, they created just, it, but I'm using it. all good or all bad. Nothing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, you're right. Zoom has been an incredible boom mm. in so many ways. Mm. But um, but is it at a high enough frequency for where we're going? Right. So, and that's, that's the question. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. My brother was here recently and um, my brother from another mother and uh, my step, my first stepmother, she died and he's inherited a um, a house from her. And he's like, what to do with it? And we in Australia are in, well, in Sydney anyway, and where I am, are in this unbelievable real estate boom where everything is just, you know, to buy your crazy little ugly little house in my suburb is three and a half million dollars i mean it's crazy what's going on in the last couple of years that same house has gone up a million dollars like not a couple hundred thousand so we seem to be in this bubble so yeah. uh, the guidance i got was the bubble's about to burst yeah. um and so I, I was saying to him so sell the house now yeah, you know, yeah. Sell sell it now. yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, i think that yeah, I wonder if that's true. I said I could be wrong. I mean, it could go up even more. I mean, he could sell it now and then the bubble doesn't burst and it could be worth another million in another six months. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there is just crazy stuff happening, crazy, crazy yeah. stuff happening. But when there's this big bubble, everyone sort of be going, yippee, yippee, lots of money, lots of money. But there, yeah. is, a big, there is a big pop coming, right? Yeah. And, and people ask a lot like, okay, well, where should I put my money? Like, what should I do? And the message is like, there, it's not really about that. You know what I mean? It's not about like, there isn't going to be a safe haven. It's not really about that. It is like, I, I think the approach I have taken is you need a house to live in. You need some place to live, whether it's an apartment or a home or a tiny house or whatever it is, you need a place to live. So get that. 
<laughs> have a place for yourself. And, and, uh, and then, like I said, build community where you are, figure out what skills you have that others need and what skill, what skills they have that you need and what resources you can share and all of those things and know that it's going to look different, but, but those are the things that become valuable. It becomes that your network becomes valuable. So it's, it's a different placement of value. And I don't yeah. know how quickly all that unfolds, but the thing is, is if we don't worry so much about what we're holding on to, and instead just think about what do you really need? Like, what do you need for life? And, and, and how much do you have that you don't need and who else might use it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're hammering the message home. Cause as I say, I've had this conversation with so many people, but it's really yeah. landing for me at the moment. Uh, yeah. So instead of investing in things like the stock market that might be going up and up and you think, oh, you know, that's a great place to put my money, which is just supporting a broken financial structure, take your yeah. money out of stock markets and maybe even investment properties and buy land and plant, and plant a veggie garden and create a community and I don't know, like beautiful something beautiful. like that, like create products that can clean up the environment or something like invest in that rather than thinking, you know, what's the next thing I can invest in that's going to make me money? Because Absolutely. There is, and, and it's not that the whole stock market will crash. There will still be in the world, like, cause I know because that they're telling me to travel, they're telling me to do things like we're meant to just continue to invest in your life, continue to invest in your life as if things are going to go on in the sense that you need to keep that energy moving, keep the energy of whatever you're trying to create for yourself. But you're absolutely right about, and, and they gave me a message. It's on my YouTube channel. There's a, a message in there that says, which structures will survive? And they are the structures that prioritize the well-being of all. And those are the ones that will do well. And those structures that try to resist it and try to keep things, try to go back to the way things were, those structures will struggle and will suffer. And so that I think about the companies, like which companies, you know, we recently had those, you know, horrible fires in Maui. And there was, you know, a couple companies that showed up and were bringing, you know, what people needed, bringing generators, bringing food, bringing, you know, uh, uh, satellites for communication. There was, you know, they were right there where people needed them to be. And they were performing the service that you would hope for from a company, which is really a public service of providing, you know, for the people. And so that's, uh, that's a strategy that's going to help a company survive in this new era. And those companies that are are trying to cheat and trying to, uh, you know, keep the profits, you know, push them up the hierarchy and, you know, pay the big guys a lot and the little people none and get as, you know, as much, as much, as much as they can. That is not a, not a, a good strategy going forward. Yeah. Again, I'm completely speechless. I'm finding it hard to think. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I think about the next question because <laughs> I'm just thinking about all you're talking about. They're like, oh, come back. I've got questions. Have I got questions? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. And I know it's a lot to absorb too because these are what I'm sharing with you are years worth of messages. Yeah. So for me, I get it one little piece at a time and a little piece. So it's, I've had a lot of time to get used to these. And, and, but the main thing at the end of the day that they say is this idea of, we want to be in a space of allowing, of not resisting, that resistance creates pain. It, it's, it creates difficulty in our physical bodies, emotionally, and they want us to try to get to a space where we let go of our attachments, let go of our expectations. Our expectations are based on only things we've known. Expectations are formed based on the past. So they want us to be in a space where we're able to see things that we've never experienced before to see what's coming because what's coming is way outside of our experience. So the more that we can let go of our expectations and say, I'm just open to feeling great. I'm open to feeling love. You know, I'm open and receptive to what good things are coming my way and to be in that space of allowing. And I think part of the reason why they're sharing some of the calamitous stuff, the difficult stuff is because <laughs> I will tell you a funny story. A couple, I don't know, it was a month or two ago, right as I was going to sleep and I, I was starting to dream and I was having a dream about Yeshua. Yeshua was in my dream and he's holding his hands like this and he's got his head down like this and he's holding his hands up and he's, uh, he's breathing. He's doing like breath work. He's holding his hands up 
And I'm grad, I'm kind of slow, a little bit in the dream, but then I become aware that there's a man standing next to me in my bedroom. And I think it's my partner. And I'm wondering what's he doing out of bed. And I, I, I'm, I can see him. I can just see his outline. He's a shadow and I can see a light around him. And so I, I start trying to talk to him and I'm saying, well, what are, are you okay? Like, what are you doing out of bed? Are you all right? And I'm mumbling in my sleep, trying to make the words come out, but I'm really groggy. So then I realize, as I'm saying this, I realize that I'm, I'm, my eyes are not open. So I actually open my eyes and there's nobody there. And it freaks me out and I jump up and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, there's a prowler in my room. And I'm like, oh, and then I start energetically clearing my room and clearing my room. And then I, I it's panic is the first thing that comes in. And then I realize that was Yeshua. <laughs> like that was Yeshua was standing next to my bed and I just cleared him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he was trying to show me, he's trying to tell me to do breath work. He was, show, he was in the dream and he was manifest in my bedroom and not like fully, fully because I was in that liminal state, but I, he was real enough that I was talking to him, but I didn't, I couldn't quite, my brain was so groggy. I couldn't put it all together until I was awake. So the thing is, is that here was this amazing thing that came that happened and I freaked, I was scared. The first thing that happened is I was scared because it was so outside my experience. Right. So when these events happen, we, our first reaction, if we're not expecting it, like if somebody said to me, Hey, Yesha was going to show up at your bed tonight. When you go to sleep, I would have been like, yeah, when he showed up, I'd have been like, great to see you, you know, <laughs> but I didn't expect it. So, so part of the reason they're telling us stuff is so that when things happen, we'll be like, okay, I got it. I know this is, this is, you know, I just got to make it through this and everything's going to be fine. And then they want us to try to just be as open and allowing as possible and to limit our expectations, to not have expectations that are too specific to just say, okay, I want to feel, I want to feel, you know, loving thoughts. I want to feel harmony between people and to just try to be open. That was a brilliant uh, example of, yeah, exactly. Because we were even talking about it before, you know, when people feel pressure when they wake up and then instead of being curious and saying, what's, what am I experiencing? They just go straight into fear because it's something outside their paradigm. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. Yeah. I've got to say, yeah, I sailed through the whole, you know, last couple of years with exactly that attitude exactly that attitude i just looked at the clock again 11 11 god it's all happening today <laughs> no it's it's actually everywhere i go at the beginnings and endings i get double numbers every time i get in my car when i start a call it's constant it's 11 that i get a double number whatever it's comings and goings it's almost like five times a day it's nuts it's really fun yeah. but it's like a lovely constant thing that's happening in my life right now <laughs> yeah, synchronicity after synchronicity so the yeah. message is uh, we're preparing you, so don't be surprised when the mm -hmm. shift hits the fan and yeah. and know that everything is happening for your evolutionary process and the ascension of consciousness on planet Earth and that if you stay in a loving heart and stay connected to source and stay connected in trust, in knowing, you'll be guided, you'll know exactly what to do. There's a lot of people I'm talking to at the moment, clients and people in groups who are awakening to who they are but they don't know how to like what am I here to do how do I utilize this and as things become more intense that becomes more known like I, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do with my ability to channel and see and you know whatever yeah absolutely and, um, and they'll they'll be moved into action so there's a lot of preparation time that's been happening as we prepare and expand our fields and remember who we are and then sort of moving into action by maybe organizing people you know like what we talked about creating community yeah yeah, uh, yeah. people can get into action with their skills maybe they have you know skills in marketing or skills in organization or you know they might have skills that will really come in are handy when things when the shift becomes more right I don't know um accelerated yeah yeah so, uh, you nailed it I think that's a really good summary yeah absolutely I feel very teary today yes <laughs> it's there's angels all around us right now and it can absolutely do that is it's just that feeling of love it's hard to feel it it makes you cry you know it's a lovely feeling 
Oh, darling one. Well, I have to say, <laughs> this has been intense. Uh, I just uh, loved chatting with you today. I'd love to pick this conversation up a bit later on down the line too. And I'd um, love to. There's more to talk about. But yeah, so your YouTube, you do these messages. What do you do them weekly or? Yeah, every Friday I post a new message and I, I channel the message and I share what they say. And then I break it down afterwards because they, the way they speak, remember how I talked about how they see, how they see all these different angels see everything all at once. So they have this incredible, like we only see one thing at a time. We're very, very linear and they see everything. Right. So when they give a message, Many times it has many layers, even one word, they would use one word, but it has three meanings. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, if you break it down, you just get more out of it. So I, I, the format, as I show the message, and then we go through it and we get, we get even deeper with what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Any last thing that you'd like to say, or they'd like to say before we, before we go. Just blessings. They always end with blessings. So thank them. I, <laughs> and that's the last thing I would say for people who want to have a closer relationship with the angels is to speak out loud to the angels that it's not enough to say it internal. You have to form words and, and it's best if you speak it out loud. And uh, and that's that's just how they work. They need us. It's the whole thing respecting free will is that we have to be really sure. And, we, and our words are powerful. Our words are creative. We have to. So if you want their help, say it. Say, angels, please help me. You can just call them angels and you don't have to be too reverential. They are really funny. They have a great sense of humor. They are, they can be incredibly literal, but they are not formal. So think of them as like talking to a, a loving, amazing friend who just has your back a hundred percent of the time and yeah. And say it out loud. So that would be, that would be the most probably yeah, one of the most important things they could get out of this whole conversation we just had. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. You're a blessing. Thank you so oh, thank much. You. Thank you so much for listening to the call and, and you know, like quitting the corporate job and getting in there and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, man. You too. Whoa. What an amazing conversation. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. I don't know what I was expecting. But um, it might just be me, but I was feeling everything she said so intensely. I felt like crying most of the time. Happy tears and sad tears in many ways. But, uh, yeah, that was powerful. I felt very sensitive during that whole conversation. I was, like, feeling everything she was saying. And, um, yeah, what did you what did you receive during that com that conversation, that transmission? It was like a transmission of energy even though she wasn't full body channeling and just talking about what the angel said there was still a lot going on a lot of transmission of energy there's yeah chaos coming but don't fret stay connected to your guidance and your source and you'll know exactly who you are and what you're here to do and it'll all be revealed it'll all unfold in perfect synchronistic ways which is actually the way my life works. When you do tap into that flow, that energy flow, yeah, I think at the Esther and Jerry Hicks, the Esther, the Abraham teachings, it's like you can drop the oars and life just takes you down, goes along with the flow downstream. It takes you to exactly where you want to be and what you've asked for. You don't have to effort anything. And like with the disasters she was talking about, often disaster can be such a blessing, like the fires that we had back in 2020, back at the beginning of 2020, end of 2019, down under the Australian fires. You know, my daughter was involved in all that. It's like she said, I was at home safe. People were messaging me from all over the world. Are you safe? You know, Australia's on fire as if well, the whole of Australia was on fire. And I'm, like, I'm perfectly safe. But my daughter's little farm that she was living on at the time got taken out with the fires. But in many ways, it was such a blessing. I won't go into now, but so many things happened after that, which were such a blessing. Yeah, she lost stuff. She lost favorite paintings that she'd done and favorite instruments and stuff. You know, she lost stuff, photographs and stuff that's irreplaceable. But there's more to life to live and there's more stuff to come. And the guidance has been this year for Australia 
that we are going to go through another summer like that summer. We haven't been going through it since that summer. The summers have been cooler or not as many fires or uh, I think we've had more rain, a lot more rain, but this summer that we're coming into right now, we're in spring, and it's already started. I looked on Instagram this morning and a friend of mine who has a beautiful property down the south coast, beautiful retreat center, is evacuated because the fires have started already down under. And I'm like, whoa. And as Anne said, every time you pick up, you look at something, there's every day, there's something, there's something, the floods in New York and the cataclysm here and the fires there. It's it's every day. It's it's really heating up. It's, it's heating up. Sorry with the pun. It's really going crazy. But yeah, I think it's knowing how to navigate this chaotic time, which is really the message that they bring, that the angels bring us as we shift into a new experience on planet Earth. It ain't going to be easy. What did they used to say to me? They used to say to me, hold on your, hold on your hat, kids. Life's going to get crazy. That was before the pandemic. I was thinking about that the other day, that funny message that they used to give me. Hold on to your hats, kids. Life's going to get crazy. Yeah, it has been. But uh, it's all good. But that light wave that she was talking about sounds amazing. I suspect that if you're in alignment with that sort of frequency, it will be a blissful, beautiful experience. But just like we were talking about, if you're not in alignment, then it will be a harsh experience for you. So to prepare for that is to let go of your struggle your suffering, your critical thoughts, your self-criticism, judgment of others, judgments of who you disagree with in the world, like your politician or your party or judgments of all the chaos that's being revealed, like let go of the judgment and know that it's all happening for a reason. And there is a grander plan for us and this world we have to trust in that trust 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 a grander plan for all of us oh kind of exhilarated and exhausted at the same time after that but i just loved that i thought that was amazing beautiful i was saying to Anne, i'd love to there's more to come from Anne. i'd love to have another conversation with her soon so i'll invite her into the inner sanctum next year and we'll see what else un- reveals itself or unfolds because that'll be a few months away. All righty. This month in the Inner Sanctum, October. Are we in October? Where are we? Yes, we are. Uh, Alan Steinfeld's supposed to be coming and chatting to us. He's just got back from um, Egypt. I have to send him a message and remind him. I hope he turns up. I don't know why he's feeling like he might be too busy, but trust, trust Karen. I'll send him a message and he'll turn up. So if you want to meet Alan and quiz him on what he has been up to of late, uh, yeah, join, join us and come and meet Alan in the Inner Sanctum this month. Oh yes, and remember to, you know, buy the book, Awakened by Death and all that sort of stuff if you haven't read it all already. And big love to all of you and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>